right, so here we are at Considine Beach, uh, just flying over the beach, getting out over the waters, just so we can pan around in a moment and have a look at the catchment area for Considine Creek. Now, Considine Creek would probably be the catchment drain for probably about 70% of the island, and you'll see that coming up in a minute as I pan around. So the mouth of the creek, it heads back towards the mainland, but just up near those rocks there, there's a small patch of reef. Now, the catchment is very important for the health of that reef and uh, the mangrove's ability to filter that runoff off the island and take all the sediment out is really, really vital to that reef. Okay, as I spin around, you can start to see that catchment area. Okay, that sort of drains the whole part of the island. Now the reef, the creek, and the gullies and the drainage, they're all interconnected. So that reef is really, really relying upon these mangroves here to be able to do that job. Okay, as you have a look over towards Bald Hill, okay, you can see the gullies there all running down through those Liverstonia palms and uh, down into the creek. So here we are traveling over the main arm of the creek. Okay, which heads into a large uh, strand of Livestonia palms. Now, Livestonia palms are found where there's areas of fresh water on the island. Okay, so all that water drains off the island through those Livestonia palms into the creek. Just swinging back, heading back over towards the beach. Okay, over those Livestonia palms. Just down below us there, there's another branch of the creek. All right, let's go and have a look at that patch of reef. So it's just going to fly over the mouth of the creek, heading over towards Conical Island and Corroboree Island. You'll see there in the distance. Okay, and you can see that dark area of water, which is the patch of reef. Now we'll just keep going a little bit further and we'll pull up above that and you'll see that reef now unfortunately what you will also notice in this reef that the patches of white are actually the corals that are bleaching at the moment now at the end of February it was ridiculously hot in the water the water temperature was over 30 degrees for a period of a couple of weeks which is way too warm for coral and uh, as a result the corals are bleached due to the stress of the heated water. And you can really see that quite clearly now, the corals that are all bleaching on this patch of reef. Fortunately, since that time, the water has started to cool down and uh, we've noticed a bit of colour starting to come back into the corals. But yeah, in the whole of Keppel Bay, really, really suffered badly over this summer for coral bleaching. Okay, I'll just spin around. You can really see that reef. Most of that is staghorn coral or acropora coral. Okay, on the edges of the reef. The water depth on the side of the reef is about two meters at low tide and about up to six meters at high tide. Yeah, and now we're just heading back towards the mouth of the creek again. Okay, it's a very broad mouth. Um, Probably a couple of months ago in February, okay, we had a large rain event and a lot of water came out of the creek and it sort of changed the mouth of the creek a little bit. Okay, we'll just pull up shortly over here and uh, land the drone. Okay, in this next part of the clip, what I'm going to do is fly the drone over one of the branches of the creek, and it's sort of the main branch of the creek which sits in behind the sand dunes. Uh, most of the mangroves for area and size of mangroves are mainly in this branch of the creek. 
Okay, so we'll just spin off. It heads off towards the right. You can see how the part of the creek drains into the other part, just in front of us. And I'll drop the drone down and I will head up the creek. Now, as you look down, all of these mangroves here are mainly gray mangroves, okay? And you'll see them there. On the edges of the creek, you'll see some other mangroves with darker green foliage. Okay, there's one large one straight there and another one just down now, those cabbage palms. Oh, they're milky mangroves. Milky mangroves sort of hang on the sides of uh, estuaries and creeks where the high tide only reaches them on the highest of the king tides. Okay, so here we are, we've just come down above the creek and these are all grey mangroves you'll see here. Uh, fairly healthy, fairly tall. There's a milky off to the left. Probably about four, maybe five metres tall, the tallest of the mangroves. Now these grey mangroves, they have uh, pneumatophores or aerial roots, okay, and they are probably a distinguishing feature of them. There's another milky on the right and another one on the right as we're going up here. Mangroves thin out a little bit, okay, and uh, still all grey mangroves so far. A little bit further up, we'll start to head into some yellow mangroves. Now, yellow mangroves you can tell the difference because they don't have those pneumatophores, those aerial roots, and they have a buttress type of trunk. Okay, a buttress type of trunk. Now, unfortunately, the yellow mangroves in this system are struggling a little bit. Oh, there's some big milkies off to the side on the right and the left with those dark, the dark colored foliage. Okay, now we're starting to get into the yellow mangroves. Okay, and you can see that dieback occurring here in the yellow mangroves. We think that that's from the fact that they do not like a lot of fresh water. And uh, we've had a few rain events in the past which seem to have affected them. Lots and lots of large milkies up here. You see them on the sides. Okay, and we're getting towards the end of the creek where the yellow mangroves tend to stay. Those dark patches there again are milky mangroves. And you can see all that dye back here. And if you have a look down amongst the mangroves, there's a bit of fresh water sitting in there at the moment. And that's because we had a bit of rain the other day and that water's come down through the creek and is sitting in these mangroves. Uh, up on the top in the center now, that large green mangrove is actually a black mangrove. Okay, a black mangrove, different species there again. We're right up the top of the creek, up this branch, and uh, we've run out of mangroves in the creek. But if you have a look down now, these are all yellows. Okay, and they actually have air breathing holes on their trunk. Okay, so remembering that mangroves are providing essential nursery habitat, Okay, for many fish out on the reefs, uh, part of their life cycles found in the mangroves and crustaceans, mud, mud crabs and prawns. Uh, mangroves also provide sediment stabilisation and trapping of that sediment, which allows for the clarity of water out on that reef. Okay, they're a nutrient filter, uh, so they trap those nutrients there that run off the land. And in some countries, they're also used as uh, wood for building and a resource. So major threats to mangroves that we have, okay, is land clearing for coastal development, uh, which threatens a lot of the mangrove habitat. And this has happened dramatically all up and down the Queensland coast in the past. Uh, also increased erosion from agriculture, grazing, okay, high sediment and nutrient loads, which is also another problem as well. Uh, sewage, okay, and sea level rises. Sea level rises, they change the areas in which mangroves can grow. All right. 
Now, our priorities for looking after these mangroves, I suppose, are the reduction of nutrient and sediments uh, running into mangroves, restoration of mangroves, uh, growing seedlings and replanting mangrove areas, uh, protection of the remaining mangrove habitats, that's very vital, and of course, with many issues with the environment, we reduce uh, the reduction of emissions through greenhouse gases. Okay, so now we're flying up the main part of the creek. Not a great deal of mangroves here, just some milkies and blacks along the side there. All up in the centre of the creek are grey mangroves. And coming up here, we have some yellow mangroves. Okay, right up the top of the creek. Sort of where the water's coming out of those Liverstonia palms, and you can see that quite clearly there. Okay. So the abiotic factors, you know, salinity, temperature and dissolved oxygen are really, really important for mangroves, uh, especially those yellow ones. We can see that with salinity changing, you know, it's created some dieback in this creek. Another interesting fact about this creek system is that down at the mouth of the creek, we've actually discovered some red mangroves. Okay, now red mangroves have never been seen in this in this creek environment before, uh, and Cyclone Marsha, uh, back in a few years ago, 2015, okay, brought along some seeds of the red mangrove, and they've started to establish themselves right down in the mouth of the creek, okay, and they're distinguishable by the red bark on the on the trunk, and by they have like a aerial prop root system okay which uh, allows you to tell that they are red mangroves and there's a few small ones they're sort of coming up okay so hey watch out for that Livestony palm all right better go up a little bit higher here hey uh, on the next video we'll get some underwater drone footage of the reef out at the mouth of the creek and uh, you can have a look at that Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it.